was hot and it was oh, the most irritating day. And, and when I woke up this morning, I was still so bummed. I mean, you know, I thought, it really is the end of the world, kind of, but not really. And I'm going to pull through. And then I got some great news that some of the cap players are going to be at the Dallas Town Center on Friday signing autographs. And um, it just so happened my boy Tommy's one of them. So go figure. So I kind of worked everything out, and, I, and that was sort of, that was my silver lining after yesterday, because I'll tell you, I was, there's nothing worse than having to stand in a long line, and it's like 100 degrees, and everyone's irritated. And then you think, okay, but we're going to see the Stanley Cup, and it doesn't happen. It's like, well, now I'm hot. Now I'm irritated. Now I'm hungry. Now I'm, you know, so on and so on. <laughs> Go ahead, Robbie. Definitely impressed. It was the first uh, <clears throat> banner raising that I've ever witnessed of a champion because I never watched anyone else's, and it was great to see my first one as the Capitals raised theirs. And uh, it was it was a great ceremony. You know, it was uh, fitting, and the way they started the season out with uh, putting up a touchdown on Boston was a uh, was a fitting way to give the crowd who hadn't seen them win a series all the playoffs that they won every series on the road, including the Cup. So it was good to see the uh, team give the crowd, you know, a piece of that action along with seeing the banner raise. So I'll let Anna go ahead and break down the scoring, and uh, we can talk about that game a little bit more deeper. Yeah, uh, well, I'll definitely break down the second game. It was a great game. Um, I Uh, the Islanders are not necessarily 
necessarily one of our favorite franchises, I would say. Uh, I would say they're a top four rival, but they're definitely up there. And uh, so I think that if he had gone to a West Coast team, would we probably have done something? Yes. Should we have done something? Probably. Uh, it did not bother me in the moment, but looking back on it, I do think that maybe a missed opportunity. So what are your thoughts on that real quick? <laughs> It's kind of funny that uh, we were just having this conversation right before the show, and I said I really hadn't given it much thought. But, I mean, the whole situation, I'm not sure how it should have went, but you got a new coach in town. He's not here. Reardon's here. I don't know if the video had any pictures of him in it, but, I mean, they had the whole celebration all summer. You know, he was included in all of that. Now it's a new season, new start, you know, new team, you know, in essence. So, I guess, you know, that's the way they wanted to make it a clean break and, you know, move forward. So I don't, you know, things kind of ended, you know, maybe not on the best terms with them not offering trots what he felt he was worth. And, you know, maybe some things were said and they was like, you know, he's going to sever ties and just cut it clean and go. So uh, I didn't really think about it, but it is something to notice. But I mean, new season, new coach. I say just move forward. Don't worry about looking back. Yeah, you're breaking up a little bit. Um... Uh, so you got a hat trick with 
quietly. Uh, six nothing, and then Lars Eller gets his first goal. The Tiger, the guy who uh, uh, scored the uh, winner for us uh, for the Stanley Cup championship. Uh, Chandler Stevenson gets his first assist, and Rick Warpick uh, gets uh, his first assist uh, as well. Um, so that makes it seven nothing. Uh, we're going to go straight into the second game. We only got five minutes left of hockey talk. So, uh, Anna, real quickly, can you break down the Pittsburgh game? Yeah, absolutely, because I won't bring up Marshawn. say the scoring is 48 to 19 uh goal scored in that stretch which is ridiculous uh the pittsburgh matchup uh pittsburgh was waiting you know they wanted to 
you know, so-called spoiled the, uh, you know, coming out there. They wanted to represent on their home ice, you know, opening up their season. And uh, I thought the cast was going to pull it out. And I so saw Pittsburgh, you know, stepped it up. They had the TJ Oshie two goals in 21 seconds was, was amazing. And uh, I was hoping that would propel the team uh, to a victory. But unfortunately, they got a, a penalty. Kuzi took a penalty in uh, overtime. And, you know, you know what happened after that. So, unfortunately, they took the loss. But it was definitely an entertaining two games. And I'll definitely be watching uh, Wednesday night for that Vegas game because uh, Vegas hasn't came out the gate too well in their first two games. So, uh, it's definitely going to be interesting to see these two teams that uh, went to the Stanley Cup last year how they're going to uh, bounce back the following season. Real quickly, Carol, that penalty you mentioned, I don't want to gloss over it too much. Uh, Cindy Crosby drew that penalty. I, you know, Some people asked me to comment on it after the game. I think it is a legitimate call. It, you know, his, his stick went toward the body, but should it have been called in a 3v3 overtime five-minute game, I personally think they need to swallow the whistle in that circumstance. happens you got to call it as simple as that you know the caps get the break sometimes in overtime when they get a penalty when they're you know doing with koozie doing this thing three on three and they get a you know mad to make a penalty you know we accept it when it happens then so when it goes against us you gotta take the good with the bad so to speak Said, as always, I'm going to go ahead and end this Facebook Live Capitals Talk session. I'm about to start the Redskins Talk session in a quick second. I see we got Dujane on the line already, ready to talk some Redskins pregame. So appreciate everybody tuning in and chiming in on the Capitals Talk. 